Oh, hello. I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. I was just so immersed in this book about animal senses. Look, this animal is called a fennec, and it has really big ears that help keep its body cool. But other animals have really small ears that are hard to find. Like, for example, this frog. This disc right here actually serves as its ear. <laughs> but since you're here, I'm going to set this aside, and um, let's check the chart and see what we're going to do today. It says, hello. Hi. Today, we will make a milkshake. Oh, we haven't done that in so long. Great. Two, we are going to read a book called Mapping Sam. What's up to everyone out there named Sam? And three, we are actually going to get to make our own map. I spent all morning working on painting a map. I'll show it to you in just a minute. But first, let's make that milkshake. Everybody, reach up to the tippy top shelf and get down your special milkshake cup. Blow off the dust. It's been up there for a while. And look, it has your favorite animal on it. And the animal is holding a cake with your name on it. Cool. Let's pour in some milk. Pour in some cream, stir it, and shake it all up. Here we go. Here we go. You take a little milk, pour some milk, and you take a little cream, pour some cream. You stir it all up. You shake it and you sing. A one, two, three, four. Milkshake, milkshake, shake it up, shake it up. Milkshake, milkshake, stir it all up. Milkshake, milkshake, shake it up, shake it up. Milkshake, milkshake, shake it up. That's not enough. Get the milk you back out. You take a little milk, pour some milk, and you take a little cream, pour the cream. You stir it all up. You shake it. And you'll sing. A oh, one, two, three, four. Milkshake, milkshake, shake it up, shake it up. Milkshake, milkshake, shake it all up. Milkshake, milkshake, shake it up, shake it up. Milkshake, milkshake, shake it all up. Milkshake, milkshake, shake it up, shake it up. Milkshake, milkshake, shake it all up. Milkshake, milkshake, shake it up, shake it up. Milkshake, milkshake, shake it all up. Okay, now drink it. Now drink it. Mmm. <laughs> cold and it's creamy and it's sweet. Shake it down into your seat because it's time to hear a story. Go a little bit closer so you can read the pictures while I read the words. All right, so we made our milkshake. Now it's time to read a book called Mapping Sam. And Sam is a little different than you and me. The map of their day, the map of their body is going to look a little bit different than ours because Sam is a, that's right, Sam is a cat. Now, cats are nocturnal animals, which as you probably know means they come out at nighttime. And if your cat is allowed to go outside, like a lot of cats are, where do you think they go all night? What do you think they do? We are going to get to see a map in this book of all the secret night things Sam the cat does. All right, are you ready? Thinking eyes on. It's time to read a book called Mapping Sam by Joyce Hesselbreth. It's a book about what is where and how to get from here to there. Here we go. Oh, wow. And there's some very cute in pages here. Well, we can see that Sam is a very, very active cat and they like to play and explore. Mapping Sam. And look at all those dotted lines. It looks like Sam is gonna go all over the place. All right, now, every night, Sam puts his, 
her family to bed. Here they go, up the stairs. And there's Sam putting everyone to bed. Now, once everyone is sound asleep, Sam slips out the back door, circles around the house twice, and then disappears into the darkness. So they go around twice, and then away they go into the night. Now, where cats go at night is a bit of a mystery. Let's see where Sam goes. She leaps over the tall fence. Whew. Then she makes her way through the wet grass. She rolls across the neighbor's yard and almost catches her tail. She climbs her favorite tree. If we mapped the first part of Sam's journey, it would look like this, right? So there's Sam's house, and we can see that she's gone around twice, right? There's the tall fence she jumped over. There's the wet grass she walked through. Then she went up into her favorite tree. This is called the map scale, and it shows you how far Sam has gone. Right? This is the distance in feet. And this is called the compass rose, and it tells you what direction Sam has gone. Can you tell? Looks like she's gone south. You know, we can map lots of other things too. This is a map of Sam. Whoa! So this map shows us all the things inside Sam's body, right? There's a skull and a brain. There's teeth and a jawbone. Ribs, a small intestine, a kidney, a spleen, and a spine. And look, we can even see all the tailbones in this map. Wow. So we can map a place and how to get from here to there, but we can also make a map of our body. Ah, maps tell us how to get from here all the way down to there. And maps can tell us what is where. So in this map of a plant, what is it telling us is at the bottom? Ah. There are the roots. And did you know that there are two kinds of roots? This off to the side is a lateral root, and the ones that go straight, straight down are called tap roots. Now, what part of the flower is at the top? Ah, I see we have petals, a stamen, a pistil, and a receptacle. And in the middle, of course, are the stem and the leaves and the buds. So it can tell us how to get from here to there. It can also tell us what is where. Maps can even show you things that you would normally never see, like what is hidden in a pond. Can you see what's hidden in the pond? What is hidden at the very bottom? It looks like there's a little crawdad and a frog. And we would never be able to see these things without this cool pond map. And up towards the top, I think I even see some frog eggs. So special. Or maps can show us that things that are too small to see with our eyes, like a single molecule of water. So all of this water in this pond is made up of teeny tiny molecules, and here is a molecule map. A water molecule is made out of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen. There are many, many water molecules in a single drop of water. 
And that is what they look like. Just like, kind of like the circles in the pond. <gasps> Maps can also show us things that are not just really small, but things that are really, really big. Like the whole Earth. And look, Sam is located right over there on the east coast of the United States. And we're on the west coast. We're like over here. So we're pretty far away from Sam. But what's even bigger than the Earth? Like the planets in our solar system. This is a map of our whole solar system. And look. We are right here with Sam on planet Earth. And we can see that we are the one, let's see, there's the sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth. We're the third planet from the sun. And there's Sam. Sam looks into the night sky. People, and possibly cats, have been reading the stars like a map for thousands of years. By charting the stars, ship captains could navigate the oceans and travel the world. Sam might travel someday. I see Ursa Major and Ursa Minor, which you might know as the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper. And I see some other stars up there in the sky too. So people would use the stars in the sky as a map. Sam might travel someday, but for now, Stan wants to stay closer to home. She prefers her favorite lookout spot on the top of the soon-to-be-tallest building in town. From up here, she can see the whole neighborhood. So the building is still being built. And you know what kind of map people use to build a building? Yeah, it's a blueprint or a drawing. And this shows the builders is a map for what they should build, what the building will look like when it's done. So a blueprint drawing is a kind of map. And when Sam is sure that everything in town is as it should be, she leaves her perch and she heads for home. So let's see where she was here. Ah, she was over here at the construction site of the soon to be tallest building in town and She's going to go all the way back to her home, right over here. Remember how she went around the house twice? And there's a map of the whole town that Sam lives in. Looks like there's the pond too. Where she creeps inside and softly pads up the stairs to fall asleep and dream beautiful dreams. Can you map a dream? You might try. This is my favorite map maybe in the whole book, the dream map, which I hope you try to do on your own. Wow. Do you see all the beautiful things from the dream map that Sam has here? It looks like things that they saw on their walk. Boats and planets, ripples of water, leaves and stars. Say, good night, Sam. Good night. All right, friends. We have one more thing to do on our list. I would like to see if you can make your own map. Now, it might be a map of your favorite, most important places in your life, like your house, your best friend's house, your favorite place to eat sushi, your favorite place to eat Indian food, your favorite place to eat a cheeseburger and a grilled cheese sandwich, or it might be even bigger. It could be a map of the solar system. Or, now this is the map that I did. I made a map of the inside of my head. So, you can see here, and this is where I'm smelling, and inside of my head there's this flower with an eyeball that helps me smell things. And you can see teeny tiny little ants carrying a spoon and a fork and a knife and different fruits down, 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 into my heart space. Yeah, and they're feeding the fruit to my heart, and that makes me strong. 
there, here is where the light goes in. And all the different things that I see with my eyeball bounce off this rainbow and they go into the place where the words are. And these little ants carry the words out my mouth. This is a place where my memories are stored. Oh, and this is one of my favorite places. This is where I think about animals, because I think about animals quite a bit. Oh, and you're probably wondering what these secret boxes are. That's a secret box of surprises, of things that I don't even know yet, but will one day open. All right, friends, I hope you have fun making your own map, whether it's something big or something really, really, really small. I will be back soon with another story for you. Keep reading and have a great day. Bye.